All right, day two, we talk about five number summaries, outliers, and fences. Um, in class, we collect data of hours of sleep that we use to analyze. And since um, I'm not running a class right now, I'm just going to put some numbers down. So let's say um, we had a number of people we surveyed, and here's the amount of hours of sleep they had. Let's say we do two, five, 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 six, six. Let's do like, I don't know, three sevens, four sevens. An eight and a nine. All right, so we surveyed. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. All right, twelve people, hours of sleep. All right, so with this, we talked about um, finding the five number summary and making a box plot. So let's do that with this data. And then today, we're going to talk about how you could find outliers and fences. All right, so first, five number summary. We know that our min, so I'll put five number summary. Okay, so our min is 2, and then we're going to look for um, Q1, the median, and Q3, and so I'm going to do this by crossing off. Um, so first, let's find the median. If I cross off until we find the middle, all right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so the middle is between 6 and 7, and you should know that the middle of 6 and 7 is 6 and a half, 6.5. Um, but if you had two numbers and you didn't know what the middle of the numbers were, uh, we talked about you could average the numbers. So you add them up, 6 plus 7 is 13, and then divide by 2. So 13 divided by 2 is 6.5. So there is um, our median. So I'm going to put that here. 6.5 is our median. Okay, so now I'm going to erase. Erase my 5 here. Let's put that back. And we're going to find... Q1 and Q3, the first and third quartile. All right, so to do that, again, here was our median, 6.5. To find Q1, it's the middle of the first half of data. So you look at everything below the median. You don't include it. So we're looking at the first half of data below the median. Again, we're going to find the middle. So you can find that by crossing off. And again, there's two in the middle. So what is the middle of 5 and 5? Well, we should know that that's 5. If you didn't know that, you would add them up and divide by 2. So 5 plus 5 is 10. Divide by 2 is 5. So there's Q1. I'll put that down here. And again, I'm going to erase some of these things right here. Okay, let's find um, Q3. So Q3 is the same as finding Q1, except it's the second half of data. So look at everything above the median. Don't include the median in the numbers that you're looking at. Again, you cross off until you find the middle. Again, it's between two numbers. What number is the middle of 7 and 7? And it's 7. If you didn't know, you would add them up. 7 plus 7 is 14. Divide by 2. All right, so let's write that here. And we can see that the maximum is 9. I'm going to erase my 2 here. Okay, so the maximum is 9. All right, so let us... Okay, so here's our five number summary. And also I'm going to write in where they were. So again, I think here was the middle here. This was our 6.5. Here was, I'm just going to do this. Here was the 5, Q1, and here was the 7. So I should write what these are. This is Q1. This is Q3. And this was the median. Okay, so a question that um, we haven't really talked about would be, why are these called quartiles? Um, so if you take a look at our data, think about how many how many um, separate areas is our data split into. And if you count, there's four, four separate areas. And if you think about a dollar, how many dollar or how many quarters are in a dollar, there's four. And so if there's four quarters in a dollar, we look at quartiles the same way. There's four quartiles um, in a whole set of data. And look at how much data is in each quartile. So we have different numbers like 2 and 5 and 6 in each quartile. But if you notice, there's three pieces of data in each quartile. So there's the same amount of data in each quartile. And that is how our data is split. There's the same amount of data in each quartile. All right, so um, if we take a look at these, we can make our box and whiskers plots. So let's do that down here. Remember, in a box and whiskers plot, you need at least your minimum. I'm going to scale by 1, so 2, 3, 4. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. And remember <clears throat> the min and max are dots, so min and max. Q1, Q2, and Q3, um, or sorry, Q1, the median, and Q3 are lines. So at five draw line, at six and a half draw line, and at seven 
draw a line. So there's um, the box part. And then the whiskers, you're going to connect the min and max to your Q1, median, and Q3. So there's our box and whiskers plot. So in class, we talk about looking at the data and deciding if there's an outlier. So an outlier can be defined as an outsider, something that doesn't fit the rest of the data. So if you look at your numbers here, hours of sleep, are there any numbers that don't really fit with the rest of the data? And you might think, well, maybe it's two. Two hours of sleep is kind of far apart from five, six, seven, eight, nine hours of sleep. So the question is, how mathematically can we show if two is or is not an outlier? And that's what we talk about in class. And so I, I put some steps in your notes. So we'll go back to the notes here. Let me find mine. Okay. Okay, so here is how we're going to find outliers. Before we do that, there's some terms we're going to look at. So range is your maximum number minus your minimum number. And in our packet, uh, at least this year, this is page 8, interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. And an outlier is any data point that doesn't fit the rest of the data. So it's uh, different from the rest of the data. And so our guess is, is two an outlier? So I'll put two question mark, is two an outlier? So to figure that out, here are the steps. To determine if the data, data set has outliers, we're going to find something called the fences. And there's three steps to finding the fences. The first step is to find the interquartile range. The second step is we use this thing I just call the magic number. It's your interquartile range times 1.5. And then that helps you find the two fences. The lower one is Q1 minus that magic number from above. And then the upper fence is Q3 plus that magic number. And outliers are outside the fences. All right, so right now this probably doesn't make sense, so let's do it with numbers. So outside of fences. And we'll use our data, um, for our sleep data that we had. And so if you remember, um, our numbers were this, our five number summary. We had two was our min. We had five was our Q1, 6.5 seven, and nine. So here was our five number summary from that data. Okay, so it says find the fences of our sleep data and determine if um, any data values are outliers. Okay, so let's do that in red. I'm just going to do it over here. All right, so step one, interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1. So with our data, that would be seven minus five, which is two. All right, so our interquartile range is two. Step two, let's use purple, Take your number, your interquartile range, and multiply by 1.5. Oops. So we're multiplying 2 times 1.5. So 2 times 1.5 is 3. So I'll circle that. 3 is our magic number. That's going to help us find our fences. So to find the fences, I'll do that over here. The lower fence is Q1, which is 5. So here's step 3 over here. Uh, Q1. Minus our magic number. In this case, it's 3. It changes. Uh, so 5 minus 3 is 2. And then um, to find the upper fence, we're going to take Q3 plus our magic number, which is 3. And remember, Q3 was 7. So let me switch colors. We have our 7 plus 3, which is 10. So our fences are 2 and 10. Um, so right here it says outline. Okay, so let's go back to our box and whiskers plot. And let's draw the fences as in as dashed lines. I'm going to use green. I haven't used green yet. All right, so our fences are at 2. Make this thicker here. Okay, so at 2 and at 10. 10 is out here. These are our fences. Anything outside the fences, so below 2 or above 10 are outliers. So 2 is right on the fence. It's right here, which means 2 is not an outlier. If someone had one hour of sleep in this data, that would be an outlier. And if there's any outliers, you would see them as stars. Um, someone had like 15 hours of sleep, again, that would be an outlier. And that would be way up here, too, and you would see it outside of stars. All right, so th that is finding outliers. We're going to do it one more time. Um, and in class, we're going to do it several times, too, and this will be something that you're tested on. Okay, so let's go back to our notes. It says, outliers impact our data representation. For a box plot, it's better to separate them out and indicate them with a star. So we'll take a look at what that means. So below, the box plot show the same data, but one has outliers separated out, which tells the story of the data better. So these are ages of Oscar-winning actors from 
75 to 2004. And you can see how, how these whiskers are just super long in the box plot. And so what that means is, remember, there's the same amount of data in each of these quartiles. So this has the same amount of data. These are the same amount of data. So the same amount of data is in this one, but it's way spread out. And so a better way to look at that is to find the fences. And if you look at this one, we can see, all right, most of the data is right here. And there's just a few outliers that kind of stretch it. And same right here when we look at the male winners. There's this last quartile, and the data is really spread out, and it's due to one outlier. Okay, so when you have outliers, you redraw it, and you show your outliers as stars. Okay, so the graph on the right, we have a name for that. That's called a modified box plot. And a modified box plot, it shows the outliers as stars. Just so you get a better feel of where all the data is, so you can get a better picture of where all the data lies. Okay, so let's practice. What's the advantage of using a modified box plot instead of a regular one? You can see where most of the data is. Okay, so let's practice just by looking at these sets. No calculating necessary. Do you think they have outliers and list them? So we'll take a look at these numbers. Are the numbers pretty similar or are there some numbers that stand out? So we'll do that in class. And then let's do an, a modified box plot one more time. It says, using set B, find the five number summary and then calculate to see if there are any outliers. Okay, so set B right here is not in order, so I need to put it in order. 17, 22, I'm not going to put commas, 17, 22, 25, 25, 27, 28, 28, 30, 30, 32, and 33. All right, so let's go ahead and find the five number summary. We have our minimum, we have our maximum. If we cross off until we get to the middle, I'm not going to do that on here. I did it on my paper already. Um, here's the median. It's actually in our data set, so this is our median. To find Q1, you look at everything below and find the middle number, so here's Q1. To find Q3, you look at everything above and find the middle number. Here's Q3. Okay, so let's find our outliers, if there's any. So the first step is you take Q3 minus Q1 which is 30 minus 25, which is 5. Step 2, take that 5 and multiply it by 1.5. So 5 times 1 and a half, so half of 5 is 2.5, that would be 7.5. Step 3, find your fences. To find the lower fence is Q1 minus 7.5. All right, so Q1 is 25. So we're going to take 25. 25 minus 7.5. Okay, so 25 minus 7.5 is 17.5. And then to find the upper fence, that's Q3 plus 7.5. And Q3 is 30. So we're going to do 30 plus 7.5. So that's 37.5. All right, so anything outside the fences, lower than this guy, higher than this guy are outliers. And if you notice, there's nothing higher than 37.5, so we're good there. But 17 is lower than 17.5. So that's going to change the way that we draw our box and whiskers plot. So now, if we have an outlier, we look at the new minimum. Our new minimum is 22. So 22 up to, let's go up to 35. Let's draw this. All right, so let's say that this is, we'll just start at 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, so here's 32. All right, so we're going to draw dashed lines at our fences. So at 17.5, I'll use green again. Here's a fence, and let's say that we have way up here is our other fence at 37.5. All right, our minimum is now 22. That's the closest number inside our fence, so 22 is right here. And our max is 33, so here's 33. So we draw those as dots. I should erase some of this. 
Okay, and then we draw Q1, median, and Q3 as lines. So 25, 28, and 30 as lines. 25, 26, 27, 28, and 30. All right, so here's our box and whiskers plot right here. Let's make that a little bit thicker. All right, so here's our box. And, and so you can see most of the data is inside here are the fences. But then we have one outlier here as a star at 17. All right, so there is how we find fences. We'll practice that definitely more in the coming days. And if you have any questions, you can ask in class. Okay, so this is day two. Outliers and fences.